everyone. Um, I'm Tiffany Jin. I'm a mechanical engineer with Facebook. And today I'll be uh, co-presenting with some of my colleagues, Hamid Kalyani, who is our systems engineer and power engineer, as well as John Fernandez, who is our thermal engineer. And we're going to be going over um, an overview of the OpenRack V3 power system. So uh, OpenRack V3 is an entire platform. Um, and first, I just want, wanted to sort of refresh your memory and uh, make some comparisons of ORV3 with uh, the previous version, which was OpenRack V2. Um, in OpenRack V3, what we're going to have is one power zone with a 48 volt output distribution, um, which is different than ORV2, which had two power zones um, with 12 volt output. Um, Something different, different about ORV3 as well is that now we have independent power and battery systems for higher reliability. On OpenRack V2, what we had was um, the power and battery was built into the same shelf. Um, the advantage of OpenRack V3 is also that we now have more flexible and uh, modular power systems. So what that means is um, you not only have uh, separate power and battery systems, but you can also add more power or battery backup as you need, and you can also place it anywhere in the rack. Finally, there is a new universal seven pin AC power input that allows for different voltage configurations. And uh, the picture that you see here is the power shelf. Um, it's shown with the power management controller on the left. Um, and then the rectifiers or power supplies, uh, six of them on the right side. And this is a firm view. So within ORV3's power umbrella, we have uh, multiple modules and also multiple work streams. Uh, we have two options for power shelves, um, option one and option two, which Hamid will talk about in more detail. And within each of those power shelves, we have up to six 48 volt rectifier modules, which is which are uh, three kilowatts each. We also have that uh, power or battery monitoring module, what we've been calling the PMI or PMC. And within the power shelves on the rear side, we have um, an output bus bar connector, uh, which is the DC output connector that attaches to the, the rack bus bar, and a seven pin input connector, which I just mentioned. Separately from the power shelf, we have an independent battery shelf um, along with regulated battery backup modules that are installed in that. So let's take a look at some of the layout so you can kind of see where everything is and what it looks like. Um, this is a rear ISO view of the ORV3 rack. Um, if you were just in the previous talk, um, the ORV3 frame update presentation um, went into that in more detail. And if you didn't see that, you can always um, take a look and at some of the recordings for later. Um, so in this picture, we have um, the ORV3 power shelf rear side, which you can see is recessed a little bit from the rear of the rack. And the reason for that is to allow for those AC input cables to be able to make that 90 degree bend and uh, attach into the power shelf. Um, it's also shown adjacent to some of the 21 inch IT gear. And you'll notice that uh, the IT gear uh, can be uh, pushed up right, almost right against the bus bar inside the rack. This is a front ISO view of the power shelf itself. Um, like I mentioned, the power management controller or PMC is on the left side. And then there's the six rectifiers on the right. Um, and then on the rear, we have our 48 volt output connector as well as our universal input connector. Um, I did wanna note that all of the uh, pictures and, and designs we're showing during this talk are a reference design. Basically what we're doing is we're defining standard module sizes and locations, um, connector locations and interfaces um, in, in order to put together a specification. Uh, the, the talk immediately following this will be uh, Delta Artisan and Light On and they'll be going into more details for uh, specific implementations. So here is a rear ISO view and uh, of the power shelf. And basically this just allows you to kind of see where the, those connectors that I mentioned are. Um, in the middle, we have the 48 volt output connector. That's the DC connector that's connected to the bus bar. And then we have our universal input connector 
um, of which there can be one or two depending on which option power shelf that you are using. So if we take a closer look at the universal power shelf input connector, um, this is a seven pin connector that can be configurable as star, delta, or single phase. It includes branching on the connector plug to allow for various voltage configurations, and it's rated for up to 32 amps. Um, an example of um, one, one of the wiring configurations is a star config that's shown on the right. And um, I did also want to note that um, there is a left connector and a right connector. Um, they are keyed to prevent people from um, installing them incorrectly. Um, and then the female connector that comes in, it's actually a mirror image for left and right. And for more details about this universal power input, power shelf input connector, um, I think Positronics is giving a talk about this later today as well. This is the power and battery shelf output connector. It's a floating connector that blind mates to the bus bar. And um, this, this connector is actually um, what allows us to, do, to, to be more flexible on ORB3. If you'll remember for ORB2, um, the power shelves were actually bolted to the, um, the bus bars, which is why they had to be in particular locations. Um, this connector floats in uh, plus minus three millimeters in each direction. And that allows the blind mate, and it also allows us to, to place the power, power and battery shelves uh, anywhere in the rack, and also allows you to add more power or battery as needed. Um, as you saw in the previous pictures, it was assembled on the rear side of the power and battery shelves, and it is rated for up to 500 amps. Um, there's also another talk later today on this, um, on, on this connector, um, and that talk is given jointly by um, Amphenol and TE. Um, it's called 48 volt bus bar and connectors. And next I'm gonna hand it off to Hamid who's gonna talk about some of the power shelf options. Thank you, Tiffany. Hello everybody. Um, my name is Hamid and I'm going to continue this presentation. So for the power shelf, we have, uh, we have two, two major power shelf options. Uh, uh, as a one U for N, N plus one uh, applications. Um, uh, they are basically mechanically the same. It's three, it's, uh, they, they both have six PSUs and uh, they power uh, the, the rack frame and the location of the monitoring stays the same. Uh, the only difference is the, the way they are powered and we have two options because the upstream breaker might be, uh, may or may not uh, be suitable for each one. So I go through it that uh, you, you can better understand. Uh, so the one that I call it option one, it's, uh, as I said, is one OU. It, it has six rectifiers, rectifiers or PSU, each one three kilowatt. Uh, if you want to use it for N plus one app, uh, redundancy application, you will get 15 kilowatt. Uh, it's three phase. Uh, it can work for, uh, with the two, from 200 to 220, 277 nominal output voltage range. The entire voltage range is uh, uh, obviously another plus uh, minus 10% more. And then yeah, we have designed it directly connected to the facility tap box. There is no need for another PDU or something. And option number one, there is only one AC input cord, as you see on the picture, and that one powers all the six PSUs. In other words, each phase powers two PSUs. So uh, for if you want to use this one for your application, you need to make sure that you know, your upstream breaker or fuse uh, is able to support that. So in each phase, you would have six kilowatt. Uh, your breaker should support six kilowatt on each phase. Uh, if you have a 230 volt, you need to have a 32 ounce breaker for 277 volt. You probably need to have above 30, 30 amps or something uh, to make it to work. Next slide. Um, Tiffany, next slide, please. Yes, 
So the, the, the next, this one is option, the option two. It has two AC cords uh, and uh, two, uh, the only difference is, is the AC input. This one has two input and uh, each uh, two AC input and each input fits three rec rectifiers. In other words, uh, three kilowatt per, per phase, per phase input. So we have two set of three phase at the input, each one will get three phase. So this is, uh, I mean, uh, uh, everything's the same, it's only the AC is different. So in this one, it's more for the facilities that they don't have a, a, a higher amperage. Uh, and then you, you want to use the connect this, uh, uh, this power shift to two tap box uh, on the facility. Um, each one, each one feed the, each one, uh, I mean, loads the, uh, the phase by around three kilowatt, uh, three kilowatt divided by efficiency of the PSU. That's, that's, the, that's the number that you need to make sure your facility can able to support. Rest of the system is the same. This is actually, again, some, some people get confused. This is N plus one. The design is N plus one. You can use 2N um, if you want, but it's designed for N plus one. And it, the reason it has two feet is only um, to support like 20 amp breaker for like a 277 applications or some other, or, or if you don't have that, or it, for 230 volt, you are around 20, 25 amp breaker. So you cannot load each phase with six kilowatt. So you have it, you, you just split it to two different, uh, to two separate AC inputs. Uh, so these are the two main options, uh, power shelf options of the 1U. There was a 2U version that we updated in the past. There is no update here that we are going to present today. Um, next slide, we are going to go through the power shelf, the, sorry, the rectifier or PSU. We use this term interchangeably. So we may use rectifier or PSU throughout this uh, presentation. We work with the uh, industry and several suppliers to come with a, uh, with a, with a reasonable dimension for the PSU, uh, a versatile dimension that can be used for several application. And that's the dimension that we came up with, 73.5 by 40 by 520 millimeter. We are going to keep it as a standard and use it for all different applications. So if the power shelf is going to change, if you add another, uh, another row or any other things, we are going to just keep this dimension. Uh, the PSU is the core of the system. We add all the features inside the PSU. It's a single phase uh, uh, with a voltage, nominal voltage range of 200 to 277 uh, with another plus and minus 10% uh, for, the, uh, for the tolerance. It can work in both 50 and 60 Hertz. The output voltage is 50 volt, 50 volt fix. And I'm going to explain it later on the narrow range uh, 48 volt concept later. The efficiency is the top, uh, is the top in the industry. It's going to reach around 97.5% uh, peak and a full power of like another, just 1% lower. <clears throat> it, has in the, it has a lot of features. Uh, I'm not, uh, uh, I cannot go to all the details. We submit the, we submit the spec through the OCP wiki page. You go ahead and look at all the details of the spec. Just a couple of items to mention. It has a separate analog bus for current sharing and the communication. Uh, it, it has both PM bus and MUD bus. It, actually, it has MUD bus as well. So we are actually, uh, thinking to have uh, both of them and eventually select one. Next slide, please. John, uh, now John Fernandez, our thermal engineer lead is going to go to the uh, thermal requirements and design. All right, uh, thanks a lot, Hamid. Um, hey everyone, uh, my name is John Fernandez and I am a thermal engineer in Facebook hardware engineering team. Um, so this slide, uh, provides a very quick overview of the thermal requirements of the different subcomponents uh, that would go into uh, a fully integrated power shelf. Uh, we start off with the with the facility operational environmental conditions. 
Um, uh, therein, we have specified cold aisle or inlet temperature range, uh, the relative humidity range, and uh, the maximum altitude uh, up to which uh, uh, this, this device or this system needs to operate. Um, you all will notice that the, that the cold aisle temperature range is, uh, is a bit extended. Um, this is to uh, not only account for uh, what would be uh, the normal operating range, but also um, a, a slightly extended range to account for uh, corner case con potential corner case conditions. Uh, this is also consistent with uh, the previous PowerShell spec. Um, and then the relative humidity uh, is 10% uh, to 90% non-condensing, and the alti maximum altitude is uh, up to uh, 30, 50 meters. Um, or 10,000 feet, and this is uh, consistent with uh, ASHRAE guidelines for data comp equipment. With regards to uh, thermal design for the subcomponents um, uh, that would go into the power shelf, we look at the rectifiers, the shelf, uh, and the PMC or the PMI. Um, the first thing we want to ensure from a thermal standpoint is uh, uninterrupted long term operation. Uh, but also efficient operation. So from that standpoint, uh, various uh, definitions uh, are put in place or will be called out. Uh, they are delta T or CFM per watt. Um, uh, ensuring long-term operation of the components uh, shouldn't uh, necessitate uh, in, uh, inefficient uh, airflow usage for cooling of the components um, uh, in the power shelf. Uh, we also look at th thermal margin to ensure that uh, a certain minimum uh, margin to, uh, to different specs are met. Um, sensor accuracy is really important to ensure that um, uh, the critical components that, uh, that drive uh, both reliable as well as um, uh, long-term operation um, are accurate. There's a certain level of accuracy that's inbuilt uh, into the design to ensure that we are not uh, over-provisioning airflow. Um, we also look at back pressure or fan overhead uh, to ensure that uh, unnecessary strain is not being uh, applied to the, uh, the fans that are integrated in the rectifier module. And uh, surface temperature to ensure that uh, we are not exposing uh, people who are handling uh, the power shelf in operation uh, to unsafe temperatures. Um, certain aspects or, uh, or parameters that have already been defined um, uh, need to be aligned uh, to ensure that uh, uh, seamless interoperability of rectifiers across shelves can be supported. Uh, and these would be along the lines of um, uh, ensuring that um, uh, all rectifier designs can support a, a minimum amount of back pressure uh, to sustain operation, uh, as well as ensuring that um, uh, the preheat from the rectifier does not exceed a certain level uh, so that downstream con components in the shelf uh, can continue to operate in it, can continue to operate efficiently uh, irrespective of the rectifier design being deployed in a given shelf design. All right, back to you, Hamid. Thanks. Thank you. The other component of the system is the monitoring. We have two approaches for the monitoring. Um, as you guys saw on the mechanical design, the power uh, the the monitoring module is uh, is a module that interchangeable. Uh, we have we have uh, we have a dedicated presentation on this, so please join later for this talk uh, with all the details. So far, we are thinking about uh, two approaches: the the communication through Modbus, we call it PMI, and the communication through Ethernet, we call it PMC. That uh, those uh, uh, those two modules uh, on on the downstream communicate with the PSUs and BBUs, separ uh, like separately, and uh, upstream they connect to the uh, they connect to the tor or your uh, uh, your top of the rack switch. The mechanical design and everything would be would be on that talk. Uh, uh, th these modules can monitor the voltage, current, firmware, uh, handle firmware update and fault and other things. Uh, next slide, please. So these are the rack configs that you, we can think of. As, as you, you could uh, imagine through this uh, uh, 
presentation, we have designed a versatile solution that can support a wide range of application. So the first configuration on the left is the power shelf on top and the battery shelf on bottom. We think this would be the main config because the power shelf is on the top, the power feed comes from the top. So the, it's like out of the bay, out of the way. The battery being on the bottom, it's good that uh, there are heavy items. Uh, so on the bottom, uh, you don't need to feel, lift it up or anything. They might also enjoy a slightly lower temperature. There are other uh, rack configs that you can see. You don't have to have a battery if you don't want. You can have a battery and power shelf on the middle, or you can actually have two power shelf or without battery or with battery on the rack. So there, there could be several other configurations that you can think. And just, uh, I just put a few items, few possible items here. Next slide, please. So here is the narrow range 48 volt concept that we came up with and introduced to the industry. The way that it works is that the, the rectifiers put out 50 volt fixed and uh, the battery has a DC to DC converter that uh, put out 48 volt and both goes through orange diode or FET that already there. So the only new component is a DC to DC converter for the battery. The way it works is uh, very simply, it has a lot of details, but as a very simple way of operation is that mm, when the AC is available, the rectifiers are working, you have a 50 volt output and your battery is uh, not working. Uh, and then if the voltage goes, uh, the AC goes out or, or rectifiers has issues, um, you can actually, the battery jump, uh, the voltage start to swing down at 48 volt, the battery is kicking and turn, hold the bus. And when the rectifier comes back, the, they can come back to 50 volt. So your, your, our entire range is only two volt Compar compared to the conventional open rack V2 that the range is 20 volt. We receive a lot of negative feedback from industry and customers that the range of uh, open rack V248 volt is very wide, uh, about 20 volt. Why do we need to do design, uh, over design both voltage and current for, for, that, uh, for that wide range? So that's why we came up with this approach. And so far we are doing very well. There are more details on this, like the droop voltage on the PSU is around one volt, 51 to 50. The droop for the PBU is 48 to 47. Uh, there, there would be another talk on BBU that goes through this. So please, please uh, attend for more details there. Next slide, please. And this is more the details that why we came up with this one. Uh, uh, having a, a narrower voltage range reduced component size on both voltage and current. It also allows using a, a fixed ratio converters, four to one fixed ratio converters that are getting very popular now in the industry. And then we can actually follow it up with a conventional 12 volt point of load converters. So we don't have to have, <clears throat> uh, we, we can use, keep using the, uh, the conventional 12 volt, uh, uh, these uh, um, converters um, uh, um, and just, uh, just have a, like a fixed ratio converter up steam. They are very efficient and great to use. The power flow naturally, as opposed to the V248 volt. Don't need to have a software to control anything or, uh, or, uh, or any other way. It just uh, power flows naturally. And it, it, and it also makes the rectifier very simple. Next slide. And uh, we also worked recently on the grounding scheme on of, uh, open rack V3. This is the way that we came up with the design. Uh, the, the power earth connects to the power shelf directly. From the power shelf, there is a wire that connects to the rack. Uh, so the rack also gets AC grounded. And the bus bar, the bus bar and IT gears, they also get AC grounded. Uh, the bus bar through the wire and the screws, the IT gear through a specific connector that has a ground pin as well. So this is very new design that ground. The IT gears, has a, has a, they, ha, they have their own ground pins. Uh, there's a talk on those uh, IT, uh, on the bus bar and connectors and they will go through that connector as well. Uh, this is very new thing on the design and uh, uh, 
um, and make the system systematic, uh, make the whole solution systematically safe. So it gets the AC grounding and also I, as you see the 48 volt return also connects to the uh, connects to the rack. So the rack also gets DC grounded as well. And the next slide shows like one possible fault. Uh, in case the IT gear return is open, the current through the IT gear, once that broken, uh, the gear, that gear goes to the adjacent IT gear and uh, close itself to the, through the, uh, through the, um, through the ground pins to the, uh, to the power shelf. In order to, uh, to avoid this kind of fault, uh, we can't, we have actually two separate uh, uh, sense pins that actually can measure the bus power voltage and if the voltage drop is too high, it shuts down the IT gear. Next slide. So that's all we had today. I encourage everybody to join the presentations later on that we have on OpenRAC V3 and we have submitted all the specs on the wiki. So if please uh, feel free to send us feedback there. And now we can go through some of the questions that we have. Let me pull up the questions. Mm. How does, uh, if, uh, if everyone likes to join the Zoom, uh, feel free to do so. Uh, I'm going to go through the, some of the questions that we see. How does power sharing work with multiple power shelves? That's a good question. The power, uh, the PMI or PMC, they have one dedicated pin. Uh, one of the IGA45 are dedicated. So they bring the I share and you can plug in from two racks to get two power shelves together to have a, um, to have the power sharing. Can you put more than two power shelves um, to exceed 30 kilowatt? The answer is yes. The bus bar is designed for 18 kilowatt though. So if you want to have two power shelf, you can have it in the middle of the bus bar without any change in the design. So that you will li be limited to have the power shelves in the middle Two, there are two power shells in the middle, or if you want to put it on the top, you actually have uh, to go um, uh, have the updated bus bar design uh, to uh, have the updated bus bar design to, uh, to be able to um, have the power shell on top or bottom. Uh, the other questions, I guess Tiffany, you're still sharing your screen. And we are seeing your calendar, you are working with your calendar. Um, let me go through the other questions that might be there. Um, is there any search protection in the back of the shelf? Uh, PCB, uh, the sh the we, we, tr we try to have the power shelf, uh, the power shelf not to have any component. So uh, the power shelf is completely uh, uh, empty, just empty PCB board. And we try to move all the components to the inside the PSUs. So that's where that there are, uh, in the, the, you can actually, there are field replacement units. Uh, so, uh, so, but the power shelf is not. And um, uh, so the search, all the search protections are the other uh, uh, like capacitors, everything, they go inside the PSUs. Uh, we are out of time. Uh, we have another uh, uh, forum in the, uh, I think it's at 11.30, Caleb, am I correct? That uh, yes, I, I, yep, I think so. Yeah, that uh, I will encourage everyone to come back with your questions. I know there 